if you're in the mood for a bit of female rage, then you're in the right place. Unfortunately, even though I went to school with advanced English learning, in English classes we chose books, not we, but our teachers chose books that were extremely tedious and boring. Usually it was something about nature, um, hunting, so it was really, really hard for us high schoolers to get through. All they needed to do actually was to copy the US curriculum and everything would have been fine. I went to school in Russia, so a plus here is that I read a lot of Russian classics in the original language. Now that I'm older, I have decided to catch up on the Western classics that I missed when I was at school. Some books from my list I have actually read naturally on my own, like 1984 or The Catcher in the Rye, because these are extremely popular books. But I want more. I want Dickens, I want Of My Said Men, Frankenstein, The Handmaid's Tale, The Hobbit. But before diving into this list, I have always wanted to read Sylvia Plath, even though I had zero knowledge about her. Why did I want to read her? Because in American pop culture, The Bell Jar, her most famous work, is presented as this hot girl read, something that a lonely smart girl reads alone at lunch and then engages in improvised debates with the professor and completely schools him. So this is what I wanted. This is what I need. If you are like me, maybe grew up outside of the US, please join in. Today we'll talk about Sylvia Plath. So I devoured the bell jar in one evening and then I read some of her poetry and then I read something about her life, which was quite sad to be honest, and was left devastated and sad for quite some time because this is not an easy read and the life her background is also not an easy one to go through. Let's start with her biography because a lot of her works are based on the story of her life. She was born in 1932 in Boston to college professor Otto Plath and his student Aurelia Schubert. Her father died when Sylvia was eight years old. This deeply affected her mental state later on, which is reflected in her poem Daddy. In it, she explores this mixed feelings of love and hate towards her authoritarian father, her anger at him for leaving early, and thoughts of ending her life to reunite with him. Beat my pretty red heart in two, I was ten when they buried you, at twenty I tried to die and get back 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 to you. I thought even the bones would do. Sylvia was a talented author, winning multiple awards, grants, and competitions, and even being published as early as a teenager. She went to college on a scholarship and continued getting recognition for her work. It was during these years when her depression began to manifest, which we learn about from her journals that were published after her death. It is as if my life were magically run by two electric currents, joyous positive and despairing negative. Whichever is running at the moment dominates my life, floods it. This description likely points to bipolar disorder, which was underdiagnosed at that time. And of course, no medication or therapy was available to Sylvia, which affected her mental state even further. At 23, Plath made her first attempt to unalive herself by taking sleeping pills and locking herself in the basement. She survived and was sent to a clinic where she underwent electroshock therapy. This episode later became part of her book, The Bell Jar. After recovering, Sylvia continued her education, getting grant to study at Cambridge, where she met her future husband, Ted Hughes. They soon got married, and during this period, Plath published two of her most significant works, The Bell Jar and The Colossus. The marriage was very troubled. According to friends of family, Ted was an abusive man, which is also supported by the journal entries by Sylvia. Her poems also mention some physical abuse, even though literary critics tend to say that she exaggerated a lot of things in her life. We don't know anything for sure, it is all alleged, but the fact is after Sylvia's death, her poems went as an inheritance to her, at that moment, ex-husband Ted Hughes, and he published this work by heavily editing it, and some even say that he destroyed some of the poems that she wrote. I wonder why. 
Eventually, their marriage fell apart and Ted left Sylvia with two young children for their neighbor. With this neighbor, they also had a daughter. And a couple of years later, this new woman in Ted's life unlived her young daughter and then uh, took her own life. Sylvia plunged into a writing frenzy. She wrote to her mother that poetry was pouring out of her with her producing a poem a day, which is very fast. Looking at this now, it seems like she indeed had an undiagnosed bipolar disorder and this was a manic episode. Unfortunately, at the end of this episode, Sylvia couldn't withstand the emotional pressure and took her own life by putting her head in a gas oven. Beforehand, she closed the kitchen doors and sealed the gaps with cloth because her children were still in the house. Her daughter, Frida, still lives in England. She's also a writer and a poet. She never had children. Her son, Nicholas, was a scientist studying oceans and fish in Alaska, where he also took his own life after a long depression. He too never had children, making this a very sad family story. After Sylvia's death, all these poems written during this episode were published as a collection named Ariel. This collection is considered her masterpiece, covering very heavy themes such as trauma, anger, pain, irritation, thoughts of unaliving yourself, obsession with death, and so on. For example, Lady Lazarus. I'm only 30 and like the cat, I have nine times to stop living. This is number three, what a trash to annihilate each decade. The Bell Jar is her major prose work, which covers the years between university and meeting her future husband, Ted Hughes. It's a semi-autobiography written in the first person, but from the perspective of a fictional character. The main character wins an internship at a magazine in New York, attends all sorts of snobbish parties, mingles with the American elite, and then has to return to her mother in a small town to figure out how to live her life. This book is about an uncertain future, despair, and depression. The most famous quote here is about Fix, about how women struggle to choose a life path without losing all other options. If you want to read it, be sure to check all the trigger warnings. This is a really heavy book. To summarize what Sylvia Plath is about. Exploring own mind, especially the darkest corners, clinical depression, the uncertainty of the future and existence, all negative emotions, despair, agony, anger, irritation, violent emotions, psychological experiences, a troubled marriage, unresolved family conflict, self-perception, and trauma. She allowed herself to express raw, genuine emotions without the veil of etiquette and societal norms, which is why her works were often banned, because, hey, what are you talking about death for? She tried to express what is usually left unsaid because it's incredibly hard to find the right words for what she was going through, but she managed to do it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. I plan on doing these short videos on the classics that I read and giving some maybe background into the authors. So if you, like me, have never read these books, please join me on this journey and I'll see you next time.